Hey folks, uh, Mark Crowder here with another software testing update. Uh, it's a Friday testing update, so very soon I shall be going home. Um, but I just thought I'd uh, let you know what's been happening today. So I spent all day writing a paper. This is, you know, you're going to realise this is what I do most of the time. Uh, this paper's on measures, metrics, KPIs and reporting. And I wrote a paper God, about three or four years ago uh, that, where I just put together a kind of basic model of a, a sort of metrics pack, as it were. Um, it's on the website. I'll put a, a link in the sidebar. Um, and I had a look over it and realised that actually I've, I've you know, progressed my thinking since then. So I've got a lot more to say about that. And it's such a hot topic in the software testing community. Um, you know, there's the test management forums that run in London every quarter. And again, when I said, hey, maybe I'll come along and you know, chat to you guys about something, it was how about metrics and measures so maybe this will lead on to that and I can come and you know, kind of explain this in person um, you know the idea is that you've got individual metrics so they're, they're very specific direct measurements of a particular attribute now when I kind of looked at this I thought actually you measure two different things you measure things about the process and things about the state of the software so process metrics are how much time have I spent? Uh, where am I against plan? Whereas, uh, you know, the the state of the software is how many bugs, what severity, where in the software. So it's important that we, I feel, we get that definition that there's actually two strands to the metrics, because what we need to do then is define measures. So metrics have no context. It's there are fifty severity one bugs. Is that good? Is that bad? Uh, I've spent three days doing test analysis. Was that quick? Was that slow? So you need the context. The context comes from measures. And that's where you need to then you know, structure these, these measures in a way that is uh, descriptive. So it would be you know, total number of severity one bugs per functional area. Now that means something. That gives you context. If you go and say, I found 500 bugs in a project meeting. Again, everyone will sit around with blank faces. Now you might know because you've got the context, and that's the thing. You, so you need to be able to communicate the context out and say that's pretty good, that's pretty bad. KPIs are goals, objectives that the business has set, and are measured over successive projects. So where you could get meaning and usefulness out of metrics and measures in one project. The KPI really isn't going to going to make any sense you know, for one project. It's going gonna, it's gonna to need two, three, four, five projects. And the other thing that doesn't get spoken about, and especially in the papers I've been reading, is that KPIs are of no use, in my view, unless there's some kind of action plan behind it. You know, so I'm I'm looking at a, an objective, and it's about improving quality or reducing severity one bugs. But there needs to be a statement about how am I going about achieving that goal. If I find severity one bugs going up, what will I do? Or down? Again, what will I do? And what's the lower level? What level of bugs do we accept? You know, when you capture <coughs> these metrics and measures, you need to be declaring them somewhere. And again, you need to give them additional context by putting them places like the test plan. So when you first write the test plan, you know, the initiation phase of a project, you can say, I will capture these measures and these metrics for this reason, and I'll know whether this is good or bad because of this definition. So you put that in the test plan, and then as you're working the test plan, you can see if your testing effort is in line with the plan. Again, okay, if they're not in the test plan, if you've not tried to put some boundary against them and say what good looks like, uh, they're, they're meaningful, but they're not as meaningful as they could be. The other thing that I just touched on there is that you should be able to draw on these measures and metrics and KPIs to some degree and define this idea of what good looks like and know when your product looks good enough. You know, we know not all the bugs get fixed. It is acceptable to have severity, well, I'm not sure which way around you go, cosmetic uh, issues and still let the product go. 
maybe because in you know the UI you may say it's not acceptable, but back at the I don't know the client area, you know, the account area, yeah, you can have some cosmetic errors because not many people go there. Defining these things out in the test plan and saying, okay, we're going to allow ten cosmetic areas, but here's some caveats about where they where they will or won't be. You know that needs to be done in the test plan, uh, so you don't get into a fight at the end of the project. Um, I could go on about measures and metrics for ages. Again, the papers on the website. There will be a revised paper going up in a couple of weeks. Um, if you've got a particular question about measures and metrics, again, how to actually structure a measure, what's the difference specifically between a measure and a KPI, for example, uh, again, leave me a message, send me an email. Uh, I'm more than happy to talk about that. And, and that's it. So have a great weekend. I will should be back Monday. I've got some client visits next week. But... Let's see what we can uh, find of interest to talk about next week. Bye-bye. <coughs>